SLE is an autoimmune disorder characterized by the presence of antibodies to nuclear and cytoplasmic antigens, multisystem inflammation, variable clinical manifestations, and a relapsing and remitting course. And the disease commonly affects women of childbearing age. First, let's discuss the etiology and pathogenesis of the disease. The specific cause of SLE is not known. However, genetic predisposition and environmental triggers, such as UV light from sun exposure, infections, and certain drugs play a role in the pathogenesis. It is important to note that both factors should be there to get the disease. Individuals with genetic predisposition for SLE have several defects in their normal physiology, including defects in apoptosis and increased cell death, defective clearance of apoptotic bodies, hyperactive T and B lymphocytes, high ratio of CD4 plus T cells to CD8 plus T cells, defective immune complex clearance, and impaired self-tolerance. Increased apoptosis and defective clearance of apoptotic bodies lead to accumulation and persistence of apoptotic debris, which triggers the formation of autoantibodies against certain components in these apoptotic bodies, mainly to double-stranded DNA. Then these antibodies will bind with their respective antigens and form antigen antibody complexes. As these individuals also have a defect in clearance of immune complexes, they tend to accumulate in various tissues and organs in the body, mainly in the vasculature. Upon deposition, these complexes then activate the complement system, leading to inflammation of the affected site. Immune complexes can also deposit in the basement membranes of the cells in kidney, causing kidney injury. In addition, autoantibodies are targeted against many healthy tissues in the body, causing direct damage. Major victims are cardiac phospholipids and beta-2 glycoproteins. Clinical presentation of SLE can be highly variable and there is evidence of multi-system involvement. Classic dermatologic finding in SLE is the Mailer rash, which resembles the shape of a butterfly on the face. In addition, patients may also have a particular type of rash called discoid lupus, and they also have photosensitivity. Constitutional symptoms such as fever, weight loss, and fatigue are also common among these individuals. Musculoskeletal symptoms include arthralgias and myalgias, and a vascular necrosis of bone. Pulmonary symptoms include pleural effusions, interstitial lung disease, and pulmonary hypertension. Renal manifestations of SLE include acute kidney injury and chronic kidney disease. Hematologic manifestations include leukopenia and thrombocytopenia and hemolytic anemia. Neuropsychiatric manifestations include seizures and psychosis. Cardiac manifestations include pericarditis and myocarditis. Diagnosis of SLE is based on the clinical findings and laboratory evidence of the disease. Currently used criteria for the diagnosis of SLE are published in 2019 by the European League Against Rheumatism and American College of Rheumatology. According to this, first, there should be an anti-nuclear antigen titer of at least 1 to 80. If not, the patient is not considered as having SLE. If present, 22 additive weighted criteria are considered, which includes seven clinical domains and three immunologic domains. Each criterion is assigned points, ranging from 2 to 10. Patients with at least one clinical criterion and 10 or more points are considered to have SLE. Treatment of SLE depends on disease severity and manifestations. Hydroxychloroquine has a central role in the management of the disease as it decreases flares and prolongs the life of the patient. For cutaneous, musculoskeletal, and serosal involvement, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or short courses of steroids can be used. Long-term treatment with corticosteroids is required when the central nervous system or kidneys are involved. 